Awesome. Daisha Daly, so good to see you. How, how are you? Pretty good. Just, you know, work from home life during COVID. Yes. <laughs> For the best days. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> what, and tell me what, what you're, what you've been working on, where are you working and all that good stuff. Yeah. So I'm the marketing manager at Bowie Health and we're Boston based though. So we're completely work from home right now during COVID um, as a health tech company. Right now we're working on two major things. We have our back with care, which is basically a tool that helps people who have to go back to work, essential employees, people who are opening their businesses do so safely. And then we have our buoy assistant tool, which really helps people figure out what's wrong without getting scared by Google and, you know, get navigated right to the right care where they're able to save money and their time and just help their health in general. Um, so we've been doing a lot from home, as you can imagine, during COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How long have you been with buoy? It's been a while, right? Yeah. So I've been with Bui for about two years. I started as their social media manager, actually, which might seem familiar to you um, as we <laughs> work together a bit on that type of work. And then recently, um, last year, I guess it is now, I uh, was promoted to their marketing manager and um, took on a whole new set of challenges. <laughs> that is fantastic. I think you are the second, uh, the second NIM intern who has who has made it to that level, which is fantastic. Such great oh, news. that's exciting. But that's that's short time frame. Yeah, startup life. I mean, things things learn, become, move very quickly. I feel like it's kind of a crash course in everything. Um, to be candid, this buoy was basically my first like real in-office job. Prior to it, I was doing a lot of like ad hoc work um, due to like helping with family things at home and just needing that flexibility. Um, so when I first started, I wasn't really even sure what a startup was, but um, was really into the message of helping people figure out the healthcare system. So signed up to do social media, was very um, open with them about wanting to pursue other marketing areas that that wasn't really my main thing I was looking to progress to do. And so when the opening came up, um, they made it happen for me, which has been really exciting and, and great. Well, you are definitely a standout um, when we first we first met you were you were a URI student. Yes. Right. Were you a junior or senior at URI? I can't remember. It was I think it was my senior year actually yeah. when we first yes. started the internship. Wow. The famous Technado project. Yes, and I that was my friends love to look at that video. I feel like my acting skills were great in it. I'm just gonna say I was recently <laughs> in a demo video for Bowie, so I'm just really upping. <laughs> Your credits here. <laughs> Do you get hazardous duty pay for that? I probably should have. We only right. had, the amount of rules we had to have in the office for that was crazy. But really, um, yeah, you know, masks, gloves, all the things. But um, limited video staff. I I don't know how they're doing it in Hollywood, but yeah, uh, it was it was crazy in a different way than our Ticknado video, but just as fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to wear the. I got to wear the tick costume, so woohoo! But it's actually we have it on the ROI and U website, but it's also if you just Google tick NATO. Amazing! I'll have to show yes, that to the team. It. Yeah, but that I mean, we did really well with that. We got best viral video. That project was super interesting, and you know, six months we spent about three months training you, and we had three cohorts. We had to kick one one out, but. Uh, Oh. And then, and then we just totally ramped it up and yes. we got so much visibility, like millions in views and awareness and, uh, and set up a lot of really great partnerships, um, for yes. the Tick Encounter team. I actually love, I mean, Tom Mather's amazing. Um, uh, his eye for social media might not have been the best at the time, but even if you look at the Tick Encounter site now, it's clear that they've really taken on marketing to another level mm -hmm. and. For me, and I think actually for Tom as well, this is one of my first ways to see like how much marketing can do for, yeah. for someone and how it can change the perspective of people about something, like taking something as crazy as ticks and making it fun, like, yeah. like such a crazy effort. When I first uh, started working with you guys, I was like, how will we ever do this? <laughs> um, and so to learn from like all of you, you and Julia and the rest of the team there and how to work with different people of different backgrounds with Tom being so science focused and us being so market focused, but just interesting to see and like very helpful, especially for the world that I'm in today, which is again, like healthcare marketing. Right. 
Right. Yeah. It completely dovetails. And uh, yeah, the other really great thing about it was the memes that you guys came up with. And I, I came, I think you guys said like, we should do some memes. And then the memes just were so funny. And I don't think if we hadn't done the memes, we would probably would not have thought of Ticknado. I agree. Like, and I don't know if Tom would have allowed us to do Ticknado. I think that played a large role in like his onboarding of excitement to do it is seeing the success of how the humor can transform into a real marketing campaign and how that can really reach so many more people than maybe a serious post might. Right. You know, like it, it's still the same message just with a little twist and it's really getting people to understand what tick season is, what your main message is, but yeah. you can do that in an entertaining way and right. still drive that message home, which I think was so fun. <laughs> like it was just crazy how fun we made it um, to, to do those campaigns. Yeah, no, it was a really, it was an awesome, awesome project. And the other funny thing about that project was, you know, the social media professional side, uh, Julia, Scott, Catherine Galliano, and I, we all had really small kids. Like, so we would plan like two and a half, three hour meetings, and we would have our kids with us. And yeah, I mean, Elise was, I think, like three months old. And uh, Julia had the oldest, and I think, um, uh, yeah, she had a one-year-old, and then Catherine had one in between, and it was, it was just, it was great. I mean, it was so awesome because you guys were great. We had a great intern team, and and we were just kind of able to make it work. I think it speaks to how even now in COVID, right, we're all working from home, and like everything is a little bit crazy, but you can deal with the crazy and make and still be effective. Right. Yeah. And for me at the time, I was actually caregiver to my grandparents, like both of my grandparents, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you guys were privy to, but like it was, I was able to help with this project and make it work, even though, um, and later work with Tom actually on like some other social media things from home and still be able to, you know, be with the family at the times I needed to. And that flexibility, yeah. like, I don't know, um, actually like right after college, my family was pushing me to stay home and just kind of help with things. And I was like, I don't want to not work because I was enjoying my work so much. So having the flexibility to work with Tom and actually work with you on some things for Nim and work yeah. with Julia on the Bargain Bay blog at the time, yeah. all those things came from that internship opportunity. So I don't know where I'd be without it, to be honest. And I'm really grateful that I was able to have that time. Um, yeah. Well, we were really grateful to have all your focus and hard work and willingness to learn because that is... To me, that's what's really key about about interning, right? Is to just bring it and have all that enthusiasm. Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> no, it's really cool. So do you have tips for recent grads or our current students when it comes to like doing an internship and then how you can leverage that into a full-time position? Yeah, I think that having an internship really gives you more confidence when you're going into job interviews. I think it can be really easy to get discouraged. I mean, for myself, I was I was easily kind of thrown into for my internships to these opportunities with you guys. Um, but then after that, when I had to go to interviews, I actually had kind of a tough time because I'd been working for myself, um, was seen as like too high for an associate level, but too low for a ma uh, manager level. Um, I was getting a lot of no's. And um, I think that was mostly just because I hadn't done any, I, the only other internship I had done um, was with you guys. And then I kind of had a little gap in between the work with you guys, um, yeah. which I think a lot of actually like working moms and people might face. And I think what helped me was realizing that the skills that I had were still relevant one. Yeah. And even as a new grad, I think it's important to know that the skills you've learned in school are going to be helpful to the companies that you're applying for. You are an asset to them just as, um, they are going to be an asset to you. So th basically it's like a, it's not just like your interview, like they're interviewing you. You're also interviewing them. Is this the place I want to be? Is this where I can do my best work? Will I learn here? And like remembering those things and not being discouraged by a no, maybe it's just not the right place for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's totally how I feel. I think um, waiting for Boo is the right choice. I, I so got a lot of no's, but I got a few yeses that I didn't think were the right fit for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't think I would have room to grow. The yes is more than mm -hmm. what I wanted, I guess. Right. Uh, so I think remembering that and remembering your worth and remembering that if you can wait or you can, and that's okay. Like you might not get your dream job, 
but maybe it's your dream company. Right. Kind of remembering those things. Like for me, I was like, I'm kind of bored of social media. I've done it so long. Like I want to yeah. be marketing manager. Um, but I love Bowie's mission. I love the idea of working with that team. So that was the position they were hiring for. I took it. You can also be candid about what you're looking for. You know, I'll take this role, but I'm looking to pursue this. And this is, can you help me there? Um, mm-hmm. And you'd be surprised at the the people that will help you along the way, I think, and, and how quickly you can get to where you want to be. That's fantastic. And I think too, that startup, right, is key, right? Because they're looking for people who want, who are hungry and who want to grow and learn and, and be nimble and pivot and all these things. And that's what's, I think that's super appealing for hiring managers to work with somebody who's like very young, you know, who's young and hungry and has a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah, I think enthusiasm is vital. I think yeah. for any, I think going into something that you're not excited about is sad. If yeah. you're not, if you're applying to these jobs and thinking, oh, they'll get me through. I mean, I understand that, especially in COVID times, that might be the the path to for now. But that shouldn't be like your what you're looking for. You should be looking for a job. You have to wake up every day and go to this job. So I would hope you would be excited. And when you're excited, people can feel that, and you'll grow. And, and you'll learn, which I think is what we all want to be doing. Yeah, 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 the growth mindset. So um, can you talk a little bit about what, what types of things you are working on yourself or what, you know, when you talk about learning after graduation, what does that look like? Yeah, so I've, I've had a long road. I think I was so lucky to be mentored by all of the, the team that I internshiped with, but um, and I'm actually using a lot of the things that Sue, you taught me and Julia taught me a- along the way. Um, I started, you know, working events with you and we've continued that at Bowie. I planned our first office event where we had our new office in Bailing. Um, and luckily it wasn't the first event I'd ever planned because that would have been maybe a little scarier than I was ready to. Um, and we had, you know, speeches and, and people come in and luckily through my internship, that was something that I was comfortable with meeting people, greeting them, understanding the logistics of what we would need, such as name tags and all those things were stuff I'd learned from helping with NIM. Yeah. Um, and that was actually really valuable to a company that didn't have an events manager to like pinpoint these things that might be missing. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though I wasn't my main role at a startup, we wear a lot of hats. So um, it's great. You get so much experience. Right. And so it also helps you figure out what you'd want to do, like what you're interested in. And, and that was a really fun thing. Um, I did do the social media for a year. If you looked at back in the day, buoy social media, that was me. Um, and learning how to create um, hashtags, Instagrams, make a real brand. Um, recently, my biggest undertaking was helping with the rebrand of our business, um, which we did within a year, which was pretty mm-hmm. exciting. Um, so we have a brand new website and um, that's just been so fun to see. We picked the colors, we picked the illustration, we picked the new value props. And I don't know, is that exciting? But <laughs> it was to me. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you're invested. Yeah, so, so those are some things. And, and we work on client communications, how to get into um, the inboxes of our users and how to, you know, really start to develop a brand that people are, are excited about as we are. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's really, that is so cool. So what, what was your average day like before you, um, you know, before COVID versus after? So it hasn't changed too much, except that, you know, now I'm in a tiny little apartment. We used to have a nice office that was only a five minute walk from, from my apartment, which is amazing. Um, and I think the main thing that's changed that's been hard is that collaboration was very easy in the office. We are a small company of about, I think we were only 30 when we, when COVID struck. Now we're about, we've doubled. So we're about 60 now, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, So collaboration was easy. We could kind of talk to anyone at any time, pull somebody for a coffee to get your answers. Now everything being over Zoom and stuff is just not as organic. So we've been trying to figure out ways to deal with that as well as like getting to know my other team members. Um, when you're not in the office and you're hiring, it can leave, you know, you not knowing people for on different teams. Like I, our marketing team is very close, but engineering and design. Um, so how are we able to bridge that gap and kind of, you know, still have your friends in the office and still have those relationships is something I think that 
has really changed, which organically, I don't know, I can be a little talkative. So I don't know before COVID if there was anyone I hadn't talked to yet. Um, but now it's something that we kind of have to work through and set up coffee chats and get to know your team. And that's one thing that I think that you'd probably agree is so important, like networking before COVID, I think was so much easier and something that we definitely did a lot of, like we had office events where we introduced different clients, different people. Um, so that's definitely changed for me. Now we have Zoom meetings and we're thinking about different ways to, you know, change the sales dinner and same thing for networking events for our peers and, and how we can help each other out. Yeah, no, I think that that's really, um, it's tricky, right? Just to try to maintain those relationships and how do you, what do you do to kind of pull everything together? It's, um, yeah, like I said, it's tricky. Um, what about, are there any particular blogs or, um, you know, resources that you tend to turn to, to keep, to keep current? Keep current these days, you know, I probably should have, that's, that's a great question. Right now I've been actually engulfed in learning marketing cloud. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but it's basically a marketing automation system. So I have been really reading theirs their primary uh, marketing materials right now just because I'm learning about marketing automation mm -hmm. um, but I mean there's just so many good resources I don't know Sue like they, name a couple of favorites maybe it'll jog my memory I'm sure you have them. uh well you know but and there's a lot of great podcasts so um like oh. I've been listening a lot to HBR IdeaCast um not necessarily, you know, social media examiner, those types. Oh, yeah. yeah. We um, are mostly my day, to be honest, like I have been mostly trying to keep up on healthcare news a lot right. of the time um, and HR. So I read like HR benefits manager, those things, which I know aren't as exciting as the marketing things. Mm -hmm. But um, that's, that, those are things I try to integrate into my work a lot is, is what's top of mind for our HR managers, which are our kind of buyer base um, mm -hmm. and what's the top of mind for consumers and, and kind of weighing them and thinking about how they can kind of tie in so that we don't have to customize too many materials. Um, right. All team, the least customization is best. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that's really key, right? Is to make sure that you're not having to reinvent the wheel constantly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, that sounds really cool. So um, what do you think made you stand out when you were looking, you know, when you were applying for a job with Bowie? Yeah, I asked, my, that's, that's a funny question because I actually, my friend now, Nate, who used to be my boss, um, when I first applied, he called me and I was really convinced that he was calling me to say I didn't get the job. I don't know why I had thought, I, I didn't think I did well in the interview actually. Um, so I asked, like, what do you mean? Um, so <laughs> he was like, there's been thousands of applicants. That's how the call started. And we're really excited that we chose you. And Aww. I thought he was going to say, I'm sorry that we didn't choose you. So I was very confused. So I was like, what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> taken aback. But he learned that's kind of how I roll. So it was fine. Yeah. Um, but what he said was that, you know, I wasn't, I never turned down the question. I was excited for the role. I had prior experience that was exciting to him to see. And I wasn't scared to go against his guidance. You know, like he basically wasn't the expert in this. So that was kind of why I thought the interview didn't go well, actually, because um, Nate would say something along the lines of, what do you think we should do for our social media? And I would say, well, we could go this way or this way. What do you think? And he's like, I want to know what you think. And so then I would pick one and I would say, you know, this is the way I think we should go. And then he would be, he would just stare. And I said, <laughs> right? Like, he's like, no, I'm like, okay. So then after that first question, I kind of just gave the rundown of like, this is what I think we should do. Apparently you're not sure, but this is what I would do. Um, and I think, like the confidence in that and not getting, you know, I think that even when you're thinking you're doing poorly in an interview, do the best that you can give, give the best that you can. Don't let it sway you. I wasn't sure if these were the answers that he wanted, but they were the best answers that I could give. And knowing that gave me the confidence to just kind of relay this information, whether I was getting the positive affirmation that this was correct or not. Um, I think, right. you know, people interview differently. So 
not wanting to sway an answer or not wanting to really wanting to hear what you have to say is great and don't kind of get discouraged just because you think you answered one question wrong move on to the next one and be confident also um i made like a really which i know cover letters are not a big thing but i wrote like a very persuasive cover letter for each job i applied to mm -hmm. um at the time I had switched from applying to hundreds of jobs, kind of like I talked about, because I was getting yeses from places I didn't actually want to work and no's from the ones that I did. Yeah. So I switched my mentality there and decided to just apply to the ones that really appealed to me and to go aggressively towards that. Um, and I will say that startups usually have a more um, detailed an interview process and in that they mm -hmm. might ask you for a test or, or things like that, which I know can also be standard art large, larger companies, but um, doing your best at those and, and kind of picking the places that you want to work and really making yourself stand out, I think is what got me it, is that I was very motivated and, and reached back out to talk to the team. Um, and yeah, I, I think that is just putting your whole effort into it in both the interview process in the resume process, which I know is no fun. But mm -hmm. I think when you limit to the places that you think you have one, a good shot of getting the job and two, you're excited about can really make it easier on you and, and help you through the process. Right. So really niche down. So how did you how did you come across the posting or that so, you knew the job was open? I was looking on Indeed. Um, at the time I didn't again I wasn't looking for startups that wasn't what I would had narrowed down my focus to I was looking for places in healthcare um, because when I had done the previous internships the place I had been most excited about was the work that I, I had done some in retail I had done some in other things but I still kept going back to the one I had the most fun which was was weirdly my ticking counter re internship and also I did one for um, a mental health um, I did like a social media campaign for some a mental health facility nice and, so I was like, you know what, that's the last time I was really passionate and excited. So I started looking into marketing opportunities at different healthcare options. Right. And so I was searching for Indeed for that. And I just stumbled across it. Um, I had also applied for like a couple other nutrition based ones, but didn't really love those. Um, right. That's, uh, yeah, I found, I would say like a lot of places post Indeed, LinkedIn, we are on Glassdoor. Um, nice. And what was your degree again? My degree, let's see, what did I get? I got a double major in broadcast journalism. Yeah. And British literature. Wow. Okay, I didn't know about that. Very interesting combination with a minor in public relations, which is when I, I had started that, and that's how I had gotten into, which I, is when I found out I like marketing. Because <laughs> um, right. I started to pursue marketing internships after I did um, a small broadcast internship that I really did not like and, and kind of switched my thinking around what I wanted to do. Cool. 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 Um, yeah. So any, any, uh, any other tips that you think would be important to share? Yeah. I think like going off awesome. of the fact that we just brought up the, that I have such varying degrees from what I'm actually doing is that you don't need to just stop yourself from applying to internships that might not be the best fit for your major. Um, for me, like I remember applying to your, your internship and thinking, oh, I'm not going to get it because I am not in marketing. Um, but that wasn't the case. And then I ended up doing great in this. It was kind of like stepping out of your comfort zone. If you know it's something you want, it's worth it. And your internships can really help you like, like give you a trajectory that you're looking for. It helps you mm -hmm. not limit yourself to just your degree. When you have those things on your resume, people aren't confused as to why you're applying for this job. Um, for me, I think in the beginning, if I had just had my you know, minor in PR with my random English degree and my journalism degree, if I had been applying to marketing, it might've been more difficult to explain how I would have the skills necessary to help in those roles. Right. But with my internships, it was clear, like this is the value that I have. I had experiences to talk about for my internships, uh, from my internships for my interviews. And it really just helped me to, you know, sell myself and, and explain like that these skills that I've learned were going to help this company um, and give me the confidence to do that, which I don't know without I would have had. Um, so yeah. Right. Yeah. But you had so much 
you know, you had done so many things and had so much experience that I think that's what really helped because yeah, where you were, you were freelancing for other people too, right? Yeah. So I had been freelancing before Bowie. I had been freelancing, but I'm talking about even those interviews where I was kind of having to go pitch myself to people and say like, hi, I think that I would be helpful for this. Yeah. Um, working on a bunch of different things with internships really, it, it's almost like it reminds me of the startup thing, which is probably why I enjoy it so much is that when you're on an internship, you kind of get to have a taste of a bunch of different things. For example, a meme campaign, um, how to use like social media ad buys how to create a demo video or a fun video like we did. Um, and it just gives you a lot of things to pull from when you're mm -hmm. telling people that you understand how to do this and right. you like an understanding of, yeah, I'm ready for anything. I've done all of these things. Um, and then in the next job, the next job, the next job, you have more and more to pull from, but internships are really the starting place of that right. kind of basis. And it really puts you, I think, ahead of the pack when you, when you've done this is that, you know, for, I think my social media job at Bowie, honestly, was like kind of like a entry level job for them. Um, but it, it set me apart, like my freelance work, my internship work, in that I was able to prove to them that I wasn't just an entry level and kind of move all the way up to a marketing manager within a year. So again, it's, it's that background knowledge that allowed me to say like, hey, I know I'm doing social media, but also I think I could be an asset on this project and this project and proving that and having the skill set that made all those things true comes from the past experience and put me ahead of the, I think that, you know, there was also when in those thousands of applicants, I'm sure people who hadn't had internships, who hadn't had prior experience, I again was a little older, so I'm sure that put me a little bit as a top person, mm -hmm. but even I think if I'd seen this job like fresh out of college with my internship experience it would have put me ahead of people who didn't have internship experience but a similar resume right 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 background yeah and what about can you talk a little bit about um the value or what have you found value in networking and you know is that how you got some of your other internships too was through nim and yeah. other freelance work yeah so through nim i i actually got my freelance work I went with Julia and working with you to different ones I'm like where did which one was it was I working or was I going with Julia I'm not sure but yeah. I had reconnected with a friend that owned a small business Allie's Tech and Feed and at the time um, was working for you for NIM was working for Julia for um, Bargain Babe but I think I had recently stopped working for um, Tom at Ticking Counter I think he had like a new round of internship I can't remember why what yeah. happened or I think maybe he had a grant he you know, how, like you or I, the oh, grand. yeah, grad yeah. school was confusing, but um, I had just recently stopped one of my jobs. And so I reconnected through the networking event and then said, you know, if you do had heard some complaints about, you know, not having help with marketing. And so then from there I was able to say like, hi, yeah, like I have these options. And also while I didn't get my next job through networking at Bowie, I was kind of like a, just the random posting a bunch of my friends have gotten their jobs at Bowie through previous connections, through knowing people. And, and I have been able to, um, you know, seek out contractors or, or hire people that I know through my network. So the value of that is just, it, it's just crazy. Like the more people that you can say, that can say that you're a hard worker, that they know that you do a good job, mm -hmm. is just so valuable because it kind of takes you it gives it gives you that step step up in the interview process because people know that your work is good and they know that you'll be an asset and they can kind of um, vouch for you. We have a lot of contractors on our team, and so a lot of the time we need work to be done very quickly. So if we know someone or we can refer someone that can do that, it's always a nice thing. So mm -hmm. give your friends work, and I think people are always excited to have a network that can fill needs that they have. So again, it's not just you, like me helping you get a job, it's you helping me get the work done that I need to get done and being able right. to rely on those people is, is great. And, yeah. and working is just the way to get your foot in the door of so many conversations. It won't help you get the job, but it can get you in the room. And, uh, and sometimes that's the most important part, at least Definitely. in my perspective, it gets, it gets you in so they can kind of, you know, you can have your voice. Fantastic. 
what are some of the tools that you end up using? Are you active on LinkedIn? What are you, what are you finding? Yeah. So we use, we're active on our whole social media channels. We primarily use um, LinkedIn and Twitter for our B2B work and Facebook and Instagram for more like consumer or hiring um, opportunities there. And it's a fun thing. Like uh, our PR actually handles it. Our head of communications actually is handling that stuff now, which I was excited to turn over, but we're very active. And I think for myself, I don't use his LinkedIn as much as I should, but I'm always um, on there for communications. I'm kind of like a silent LinkedIn user in that I read everyone else's stuff and comment on it, but don't post enough. Um, but that's really valuable. And I've had a few interviews come through um, LinkedIn where people are just asking to have informational interviews with me, mm -hmm. um, which I'm always happy to do and excited actually about. Cause I'm like, oh, you think I have information for you? How nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here I'll share the knowledge that I have but I think doing those types of things is so helpful too like being active on LinkedIn when you're looking is yeah. so important because sending an, a nice email to someone asking if if they have guidance a lot of times people are willing to help you especially if it's someone you know that's a friend of a friend again those networking opportunities will help yeah. you out um, but I've had a few people reach out and, and kind of ask the same questions that you've asked me today too like how did you get into the startup? What made you, like, where were you looking? Do you like it? Do you like working at a startup? What's it like? And kind of those things when um, you just may need some guidance on where you want to go right. and what you want to do. Um, I think that LinkedIn is a great resource for that. And even you can, you know, post that you're looking for your job. I've actually had a couple of friends do that, especially during COVID where people have been laid off due to COVID. Um, and no faults of their own, obviously, saying they're looking. And again, those networking connections tag them in a bunch of jobs that they might be interesting in, which can mm -hmm. kind of sometimes be the hardest part of applying to jobs, at least what for me is finding the ones that really excite you. So right. if you feel comfortable posting something like that and have friends in your network that are in roles that or at place working at places that you're excited about, um, I think that's an obvious thing to take advantage of and can be really helpful. Yeah, no, that sounds great. And so it, you've seen a bunch of friends get hit with layoffs and things like that. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm in, uh, our company is able to work from home completely. Um, I'm in Boston. So Wayfair is a big office here. I know they had some layoffs. We also had like TripAdvisor we'd seen. Um, there's just some big companies that I think the industries are being hit and, and are having some layoffs. And so when I see those, when I see my friends post who I know are great, um, would be an asset to any team. I'm always happy to share with anyone that I think could use their services or, or use that type sure. of role. Um, and I hope like everyone does that for their friends and the people that uh, have worked well with them, you know? Yeah, definitely. And have you, has we seen a big uptick with COVID being in healthcare? Yeah. So we actually became uh, the COVID tool for Massachusetts. Wow. Exciting. Um, and we have just seen a lot of people coming to our site to figure out whether they think their symptoms are concerning. Um, we also have our back with care tool, which is being used around in offices around the country where people are trying to make sure that their offices are safe and make sure that they're not, you know, uh, accidentally bringing COVID into the workforce as well as people just wanting to have a sense of, you know, normalcy amid yeah, crazy. Right. Um, but yeah, we've seen a, a huge uptick in, in users and we're excited to be able to help so many people, which is really the overall goal of, of what Bowie does is kind of helping people get the care they need when they need it and just being a guiding hand on, on their journey. And so it's nice to have, have more people that were able to help and dissuade their fears, hopefully, or get them to the care that they need before it's too late or, or concerning to them. Yeah. Well, and I think there's uh, so much need for information and assurance, you know, yeah. of like, okay, this is, this is what I know. I listened to a webinar because I'm one of the co-founders and I'm the board president at Ciro's Montessori oh. and trying to decide how do we safely open up our school to 30 families, you know, including our teachers and they're in school full time, um, you know, every day and you know so far so good but we we did a lot of work particularly the safety team did a lot of work to make sure that we were doing everything that we possibly could um and 
but it was hard to find that information i feel like yeah it can be really concerning and scary to have to open a new place and that's kind of what we're trying to do we have a playbook uh, for employers that that are looking for guidance during this pandemic about what they can do most um as well as like you know we have guidance for consumers or our user base as i would say that people who just go to the website and, and go through a covid interview which is basically just like talking to your doctor and, and about similar symptoms to covid and um, if you are symptomatic, what to do. So what does self-isolation mean? What does all of those things, what, what, what are my next steps? So that right. there's educational value there because a lot of it is fear. It's the fear of not knowing what to do, of how to stay safe. Am I okay? Where do I go? Um, I can just imagine that finding a testing center is when you're sick, when you're feeling unwell, not right. and, and, and Bowie kind of takes the guesswork out of that, makes it so that you can kind of just see okay, this is the place near me where I can get testing. Um, what, what should I do next? Can I, go, can I get tested at my PCP? All, all those kind of questions that. How much does it cost? Yeah. Um, yeah. Crazy. I know we're, we're in such crazy times, but I, I'm certain that Bowie has good leadership in your direction and all the experience that you bring. And uh, yeah, you just have this amazing, um, enthusiasm and passion for what you do. And I think that's hard to find in a lot of places. So. Yeah, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be at a company that, you know, excites me all the time and, and has given me the ability to grow. And I think that if more companies did this, people will be more excited about work. So that's my, um, my tidbit to any, anyone listening is that like, if you want your employees to be happy and work hard for you, invest in them, give them a chance to prove themselves excite them with some challenges and, and hopefully I'm not like scaring people, but I think it's fun to challenge yourself. I think that when you really have to step out of your comfort zone, it's because you're learning. It's because you're pushing yourself. It's because you're doing something you've never done before. And then the after, trust me, it's worth it. it it's worth it to, to try to do those things and it'll be worth it to your team, not just your own, not just your career. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, they've built a culture of safety. Like, so if something doesn't go right, you, you, you must feel like, okay, I can experiment because I'm not going to get fired if I make a mistake. Oh, for, yes. We have, um, we say fail fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we try a lot of new things. They're not all going to work. I think that's something that, that we understand. And, and just because you can be working hard and it can still fail. And I think that's something that as a company, if you're asking people to do this, you have to have that level of safety and understanding. And also we have a level of vulnerability within the company where an openness where we can say um, in our retrospectives, really what we're thinking, what went well, what didn't, what needs to change. Um, recently, we had some project management issues just due to, you know, not understanding each other's what people were working on, not having that transparency between teams about why things were getting pushed and, and not having project managers in general um, when that falls on you, like why were things late? And, um, you know, there, there's some things, I actually just shared something on, on Facebook about parenting, but I think it also applies to work is that there's some balls in the air if you're juggling them that are plastic and will bounce. And there's some that are glass that will break. Obviously you don't want to drop a, a something that affects a major client you cannot you don't want to be pushing the back those deadlines but if it's an internal deadline and it's because you were trying out something and it didn't work but it was a great idea and now we grilled it out i think that's one that can bounce and you can try again um mm -hmm. so just kind of understanding like your must do's and i think we're we're pretty strict about the things we have to do but um you know we're understanding of of that one we're all working in covid so the challenges are immense and we're all working from home, which is another struggle. Um, but that we're all working hard and that we value that. Um, and luckily we've had, had great success recently. So that that's yeah. good to see, but when things don't work, you know, right. it's more about reassess instead right. of, right. Play. Instead of it's your fault. Right. There's no blaming, which I, I'm still <clears throat> the, the, the team at my company is, is great. I started when we were only about, Think like 20 people that could be wrong but we were in we were in two offices in new york and boston so i think there was about like 12 people in my office um, and i think we were able to really build a, a strong bond there and a strong understanding of the culture that was wanting to be inclusive of all um, people and also 
all opinions. So making sure that people, no matter the level, their opinion is valid. Because if I think right. that I was a social media manager and my boss was our chief growth officer, um, but he always really valued my opinion and, and took it in stride and, and understood if I disagreed and didn't kind of just ignore. Right. Um, there's like a level of humbleness with a team. And I think with people, if you really want to succeed in, in that, you admit that sometimes you can be wrong and another person can be right and just learning and trying, or you could both agree to try both things, which we've done in the past too. That's uh, cool. So That's yeah, it's really awesome. And I have to say that the team is really great. We are hiring also. Um, Good to know. So yeah. in what, what areas? I think everywhere. Yeah. Uh, um, we're, I know and everyone's we're, working remote, right? Yeah, everyone's working remote. So we're hiring in a lot of different fields and then we're also like are we have our boston office which eventually hopefully one day will reopen because i am not made for work from home life forever mm. missing, missing my friends but you know we have to be safe um uh, and then we have a new york office but we're hiring around the country and we're most likely might have a work from home um we, we always have unlimited work from home actually uh, mm. and we have unlimited vacation which has been really awesome that's great. Yes. Yeah. When I've seen, because we're friends on Facebook, they've had some awesome trips, which now that we're all in lockdown, I think, wow, it's so good that you, you know, I feel the same about myself because I'm a big traveler. I'm really glad that I did the trips that I did and wasn't sort of waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah, me too. I was glad that I was able to, because I feel like a lot of time, especially when you're entry level, you're kind of grinding and we definitely did, but there was also not a pressure because that sounds bad, but like they wanted you to take vacation. It wasn't a limited vacation with the idea that you'll never take it. I took probably six weeks my first year because nice. I was going to Germany for a wedding. I was in like four or five weddings. Um, and then I wanted to take a vacation for myself because weddings are not always a vacation when you're in them. No, especially uh, in it. <laughs> <laughs> it can be a lot of work being a bridesmaid. Yeah. So um, I was lucky to be able to do that. And um, I feel even luckier now that, that COVID's happening, that I was able to travel and enjoy. And I think a lot of people are seeing that during COVID that when we always have had a flexible schedule, as in going to the office, we don't have nine to five. Yeah. Uh, so I was lucky in that because when I first started Bowie again, I was still caregiving for my grandmother at the time. So when my grandmother got sick, I was able to work from the hospital if I wanted, though they did harass me into turning, just taking some paid time off. Um, but uh, like that flexibility, I think that comes with COVID is something that people have been excited by. And is something that I think is exciting for all of us is just having that flexibility to make the schedule work when you can. Right. At least for me, I don't have kids at home, so I'm not dealing with kids in daycare. I'm sorry for everyone who's dealing with that struggle. I'm sure it's really difficult. Um, I can't even imagine, to be honest, but having the flexibility to like, you know, when, things start to come up again like hopefully one day kids have baseball games I can you know say yeah. I work seven to three so I can go to my nephew's game and no one is upset and there's not meetings all day that's always kind of been nice to be able to have the flexibility of, of when you can be in the office and now it's kind of the same we do we try to be the same during COVID is that you know you don't have to be a nine to five you can be a different time especially right. with you know understanding that people don't have child care at the same right. time, um, maybe you want to work a, I don't know, 12 hour day on Monday. Cause that's the day your mother-in-law comes over to watch the kids. And it's your only day to like really have all your meetings. You know, it's like being, I think, um, honest with what's happening with each other. And also again, the company allowing you to be that vulnerable and, and say what is going to work best for you. And it sounds like they're not totally unrealistic about, like, you know, when you think of startup, people think, oh, you're working 24 hours a day. No. It's, it's I mean, there's definitely reasonable. times of crazy. But I think with anyone who's working in the healthcare field during COVID, they feel that, and much more so than I, which is, is there in, like, very crazy situations. But even in health tech, um, yeah. we've had some crazy weeks. I won't deny it. I think that there's times where I've worked 80 hours a week, but there's also times where the company – said, okay, well now take the whole week off because you guys just worked a lot. Yeah. Um, so I think it ebbs and flows. I That's think reasonable. at a startup, you have to like kind of be ready to work really hard, but it doesn't feel that hard because it feels, it's almost like you don't want to put the challenge away because you want to solve it. You want to solve the puzzle before you put it away. Mm, uh, that's a great so, analogy. 
Yeah. So that's kind of how it felt for me. I, I mean, I was a little tired, but I was still excited to be working. Um, yeah. even at like, you know, crazy hours. It wasn't, it doesn't feel exhausting when you're excited to be doing it. Um, and the, I don't think anyone should put up with a crazy pace all the time. I think right. that, you know, we're, that's we're expected cool. to work to meet these challenges, but also we're expected to, you know, when we have a lull, take the time when you have, uh, an excessive week, say something and maybe the next week, take it a little easier and, and kind of like go with that. And that's how you're going to get the best out of employees is when they're rested and they're feeling like supported and cared for. Well, and I would say that Booby was probably in a better position to weather COVID with, with this culture in existence, right? It wasn't like, oh, okay, now we have to figure out can people actually work from home, right? Because probably everybody had been working from home at varying points in time anyway. Yeah, we already had it set up so people could work from home with, a, you know, whatever that means for the computers. I don't know. But yeah. uh, we had that set up. We had um, people working from home. I mean, I think most of us were just sad m about not being able to see our friends every day. I, I yeah. say it as like our company reminds me of like a nice high school where <laughs> I know it sounds like an oxymoron, but where you're like excited. You might not know everyone there, but you might not be best friends with everyone there. I mean, but right. you know everyone and you're excited to see them. Almost like a friendly little neighborhood where you're yeah. like, um, so I think we were sad to be losing our office, which was kind of like our networking fun home, yeah. but you're ready to work from home. Right. Um, we had everything that we needed. We had our computers, we had, you know, and also um, Bowie was very generous in helping us set up our home offices if we needed help with that gave us like, I can't remember, a little stipend um, to help nice. us like furnish something. And that's another thing, like I'm in a one bedroom apartment, so that can be rough, but they recently just opened the office to have like one person per conference room if they need to go in and use. Oh, you know, that's good. People. Yeah, for the people, like, so basically we have to wear a mask in the office, but you can go and sit in your conference room alone um, for those who are really crammed in tight places in Boston. Like, or like, have kids climbing all over them at home. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I have a, I host our webinar program. That's another thing I do at Bowie. And so when I do that, I typically go into the office because my boyfriend also works from home. So it can't be totally quiet. Right. Uh, which, you know, is a nice option to have. And also the company being understanding that if you want me to do this, then we can do this for you. And that, and that kind of relationship is nice. Yeah. No, I think that's fantastic. No, this is super. Um, okay. So any, any parting Origin. thoughts? I think just don't, covered a lot. just don't get discouraged. I know COVID right now is scary and the job market is probably scary. Um, but there are places that are looking for you and are going to be excited to have you on the team. And also don't, if you are interested in anything that I talked about today, feel free to reach out to me. Always happy to talk as anyone that knows me will tell you. Um, and yeah, I'm just happy that I was able to hopefully help some people out. And if I can continue to do that in any way, help you, um, let me know. Happy to do so. Excellent. Well, this is fantastic. All right. So we're going to, uh, drop off on our Facebook live here, but, um, and then just stick with me cause I want to do like a screenshot and all that good yeah, stuff. Sure. Awesome. So much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Stop recording.